guys, this is Ms. Howington here um, at Research Triangle High School. Today we are talking about soil erosion and mainly the prevention of soil erosion because we like our soil um, and also irrigation. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So by the end of this lesson, so that's the video and the activity that goes with it, um, hopefully you will be able to determine the most environmentally and cost effective methods to prevent soil erosion and irrigate crops. So, long story short, um, in the United States, we have moved from the small family farm, which was big enough to just feed your family, we're called subsistence farming, to very large scale commercial farms. Um, in, two, in the year 2000, the average farm in Iowa was 346 acres, and so just so you know, an acre is a little bit more than a football field. So that's really big. So these big, big farms require the use of really big farm equipment. Um, and so that also requires uh, planting in ways that these really big farm equipment, that this really big farm equipment can get in there and actually uh, work properly. Um, and then also uh, monocropping, which makes it, again, really easy for the big farm equipment. Um, you just plant one type of crop on the entire farm. Um, and this has some mixed uh, benefits and costs. So with monocropping, it increases the yield um, with a lower amount of effort because we're we can use these big machines. Um, but it does require a lot of pesticides, which we talked about earlier, um, or which you investigated earlier on your own, uh, because if there was an infestation of some insect that liked corn on a farm that grew only corn, then you would wipe out your entire crop, and then you would make no money for the year, and that would be terrible if you were a farmer. Um, and then also using or planting the same exact crop on the soil year after year after year uh, without any breaks, which monocropping frequently does, um, that can exhaust the soil. It'll suck up all the nutrients that that plant needs, and that soil will never have a chance to get more of those nutrients. So that requires a lot of uh, fertilizers to be used, commercially produced fertilizers. And then uh, often these big, large-scale commercial farms are in places where there's not a reliable rain or it's not like as frequent as it needs to be um, and so then that uh, perpetuates the need for irrigation um, so which we're going to talk about in just a second okay so what's really important is good topsoil um, so keeping fertile topsoil in place is very important it takes hundreds of years for really good topsoil to form to make sure that you get all of those nutrients um, that you need so one really so we just want to prevent the topsoil from leaving in the first place or erosion we want to prevent that so um, planting cover crops <clears throat> or crops that you're not necessarily going to get any sort of um, commercial value out of uh, provides roots that hold the soil in place and sometimes those cover crops can even return nutrients to the soil like this is clover here um, and that is going to return nitrogen to the soil which uh, lots of plants need it's an essential nutrient <clears throat> and also uh, another thing that you can do is to plant the crops in different patterns on the land depending on the terrain or on the slope of the land so you can do something like contour planting um, or plant the, the crops on the contours or the parts that are the same elevation um, rather than in straight lines up and down, which would promote the soil just running down the hill. Um, or you could do intercropping or strip cropping where you plant different uh, species of plants in different rows so that when one is harvested, there's still another one there. Um, to soak up any soil that might run off. So like you see in this picture, you have corn and then soybeans and then oats all right next to each other. Um, or you could do alley cropping or sometimes this is called agroforestry or using windbreaks. So you're planting crops in between rows of trees um, so that the trees are there to slow down the wind uh, and this prevents any soil from being blown away um, and the trees will also trap any 
soil that tries to run off if there's water erosion. Um, and trees are also really good to have uh, near stream beds because they will soak up any excess nutrients from fertilizer. So that's also good because we don't want that getting in the water because it can cause algae blooms and all sorts of things like that that we'll talk about with our water unit. Um, and then another method is to do no-till or minimal till. Um, so you're not turning up the soil, so that reduces the chances that your soil will ever be blown away. Um, it also increases the amount of carbon that's stored in the soil, and so that's better for plants to be able to, to grow there. Um, and But the drawback with all of these things is that they make it almost impossible for big machines to get in between these rows of crops and to harvest. So that makes harvesting and planting much more difficult um, and much more human labor intensive. So in places where we have don't have reliable rain or don't have as much rain as you might need, um, then we can use irrigation. So just make your own rain. Uh, agriculture is the largest consumer of fresh water in the United States, um, as you can see here. So some concerns with irrigation are soil salinization. So when you uh, add water to the soil, it evaporates. And any salts that were in the irrigation water get left behind in the soil. So this can make the soil super salty. Um, and plants don't usually do well with that because salt tends to dehydrate roots. Um, and then another problem is water logging. So over time, the um, adding water to the soil can increase the uh, height of the water table and can bring it up so that the roots are always wet. The roots just want to be sometimes wet. And if they're always wet, they can basically drown um, because they can't get any oxygen. And then also with the irrigation, um, some concerns are erosion because you're adding water to the soil and so it can just take the soil and drag it down the hill with it. So there are some uh, typical irrigation techniques that are used. So furrow irrigation is very cheap and easy. It's been used for a very long time. Um, so basically you dig a trench or a furrow along the side of the crops, so in between each row of the crops, and then you have a pipe at the top that has holes in it. Um, and that releases a lot of water, usually like two or three more times than the plants actually need. Um, and that will just flow downhill down the alleys um, and water your plants. So you have to use way more water than you need to make sure that the plants at the bottom of a hill get some of the water. Um, this can also result in irrigation because you have water moving over loose soil going down a hill, and again, it's inefficient. Um, you can use flood irrigation. So you flood the entire field and let the water soak in. Uh, this technique can be disruptive to plant growth because it can get the roots too wet for them to um, be able to carry out respiration. Um, and it can also result in waterlogging of the soil. However, it is more efficient than burrow irrigation. Um, you could use spray irrigation where water is just pumped across the field. Uh, there's lots of different techniques for this. Some are more efficient than others. So this is mechanized. These two are just gravity feed or just flooding. Um, so this is mechanized and requires constant power source. Uh, so the equipment is more expensive and you're using more energy. And however, it is more efficient at reaching the crops. Um, but there is a fair amount of evaporative loss in this. And then the most efficient way of irrigating your crops is called drip irrigation. So you have a hose that drips slowly, laying near the base of the plants. Um, and or you can bury the, the hose underneath the surface of the soil. Uh, and in that case, you have almost no evaporative loss and all of your water is going directly to your plant roots. However, um, this method with the drip irrigation is not good to use with large equipment because if large equipment runs over your hoses, it squashes them and then they are no good. Um, whereas these other techniques can be used uh, in fields that have use large equipment. All right, guys, so that is your quick rundown on erosion prevention and irrigation techniques, and hopefully you do a lot of good research uh, for your arms.